I'm Keith and welcome back to the shop. Now this is not one of my traditional woodworking videos. This video is going to show you five or six things that I use around my shop all the time that you may not have ever heard of. These are by small tool makers or inventors or makers that don't have the advantage of having a big corporation behind them pushing marketing and research and development. These guys did it all on their own, refine the process, refine the manufacturing to bring you the best product possible. All right, enough of this palaver. Let's get it started. The first up is a product by Dave Moore. These are Magport dust collection fittings. Now, if you don't have the advantage of having static dust collection piping in your shop where each pipe goes to a different tool that goes back to a dust collector, and instead you have more of a mobile shop where you're moving hoses around, this is what you need. So let me take you on a quick tour around the shop and see where I have these and see where I've put them to use. Okay, before I show you where I use it in my shop, let me show you what you get with the 10-piece starter kit. You get three of these, the four-inch Magport magnetic fittings. You get two short sections of this four-inch diameter flexible hose and then five of these host clamps to keep everything in place. Now they do also sell this in the two and a half inch version if you don't have four inch dust collection. All right, so this is my dust collector. It's a three horsepower Laguna C flux unit. Now I have one static hard line piped in that goes back and under behind my miter saw and back to my router table and drill press. But I have two flexible lines coming out of here. One flexible goes to the table saw, and the other one is what I use the Magport fittings for to go from tool to tool. So as you can see here, I have my giant kind of floor sweep broom. I hook that up, and I can go around the whole shop and vacuum everywhere. With a quick turn of the wrist, it comes off of that. And then I also have this small floor attachment for getting into little nooks and crannies and crevices around the shop, like by the miter saw or under the toe kick of the bench or behind the bandsaw or behind the ears, wherever. Now let me show you how I hook this up to my joiner planer and the bandsaw. So the bandsaw has two dust collection feeds, one that goes to the bottom of the table and then one goes around the back to the bottom compartment. What I did was I had some flexible hose and I came off with a TY and from there I hooked up my Magport dust collection fitting. So I can just take over my flexible hose with the other magnetic fitting on it and I'm hooked up. When I need to change machines, a twist and I'm off. And then I basically turn three feet to my right and here's my joiner planer combo dust collection, which again, I have the Magport fitting hooked up to. Hook that up, do all my milling and jointing and then I can just disconnect that. And if I don't have this hooked up to one of my attachments and I just want to kind of store it up out of the way, well, not that. I just want to kind of up and out of the way. Magnets. All right, next one, come on. All right, next up is this. The Wobi camera jig. This was designed by Ben Paik out in California who creates unbelievable stuff out of recycled skateboards out of a container. Now he created this because he works in a shipping container where it's very small and narrow, yet he films everything for his YouTube channel. He needed a way for his camera to extend out to certain areas, but then be able to collapse out of the way. And that's exactly what this rig does for me. Since I'm filming everything here in the shop and I kind of need to be mobile, I have different hot spots where these things are located. I'm gonna show you how it works. Now Ben doesn't sell the actual rig, he sells the plans for it. And with those plans comes a whole part list. It also comes with the CNC file if you wanna have yours cut out by CNC, which is what I did because I wasn't cutting all these parts out by hand and then hand sanding them and all that. So I outsourced these to my friend Alma at Pink Soul Studios who hooked the brother up. Correction, Ben does sell pre-made camera rigs on his website. I never knew. So let me show you where I have these around the shop and why it is so useful to have this. All right, first up is over here where I have the drill press and the router table. The way this is designed is it slides right over a three quarter inch pipe. So on the wall here, I kind of rigged up this little trolley so I could go back and forth a little closer to each machine. This slides right on top. And then there's a knob to tighten it down. So it can come out, go up, turn, come over here. Beautiful. Now I'll show you where the other ones are. Follow me. Now over in this corner of the shop where I need to either get the assembly table or, or the table saw or maybe something that I'm working on the bench here. Slide it right down. Lock it with the adjustment knob and I can still turn. Whoa. Got to tighten that a little bit. 
like that. Now I'm gonna leave this here and go over to the other static one. Come on. All right, now here is the other one, which I have attached to the wall, which allows me to get to the miter saw and the joiner planer combo over here. And I could get a little far away to the bandsaw as well. But that's not all. The actual camera that's filming me right now, which is my iPhone, is on a Wobi camera rig that I hooked up on wheels. So I'm gonna flip around and show you how this works. Okay, this one I modified to be a little bit longer. This is ideal for getting shots over the table saw or on the bench, those up close shots I really can't get with any of my other satellite units. Now the hardware that I use to hook up my phone is basically this, it's an Andor TB81X uh, camera mount, usually for a DSLR, but I also bought this little iPhone mount here that goes right on top. So you can hook up your DSLR, your iPhone. I've seen people with a platform to hook up their laptop to this so they can maybe access their CNC machine and then when they're not using it, boop, push it up and out of the way. All right, let me show you how I have it secured into the bucket down below and how it becomes mobile. So there it is, a five gallon bucket with a 50 pound bag of concrete poured inside. There are mobile casters underneath, but this single unit right here has changed the way I film and how easy it is for me to get different shots around the shop. I got so sick of trying to strategically maneuver this tripod around without banging it into something or getting it wedged in between something else. Now the plans also have a template to cut out your own wooden one of these tightening knobs, but I prefer the little Rockler ones with the rubberized handle. Also, if you can't find bolts that are the right length and they're too long, bought these little nut covers on Amazon. I'll put the link down below to those as well. They just keep you from banging your knuckles when you're tightening this knob or loosening it. All right, on to the next one, let's go. Huh. Another river table. What? I thought we were taking a break. Okay, next up is this, the Curve Cut Pro. This was designed by Glenn Revheim. Now this is actually a prototype which Glenn sent me to try out, but what it includes are 3D printed parts, this sliding stop, and then this fixed end stop. The extruded aluminum rail that it rides on isn't part of the package just yet. You'll have to buy that separately along with the metal rule separately. I know Glenn is working to kind of sell this as a whole package, but right now all you can purchase are the 3D printed stops. Now I'm gonna show you how this works, but first, while we're over here, I wanna show you another item which also works well in tandem with the Curve Cut Pro, and that is this, the Jonathan Katz Moses Zero Deflection Stop Lock. Now I've had this for a long time. In fact, Jonathan had sent me the version 1.0 way back when he first developed it, which I still have and use. The newest version has an anodized red aluminum, micro adjust, and also a different waffle pattern here for adjusting the height of the stop block. So depending on the height of your fence, you can move this up and down into each track and tighten it down. Now I have a very short fence here, so I have it on the lowest setting, but it slides back and forth in your T-track and these lock down tight. That is one of the main selling points of this. Zero deflection. It does not move once it's tightened down. Unlike other units that shall remain nameless, even when you tighten this thing down as much as you can, see that movement? Now, if you're slowly moving your stock against this, yeah, it's not a big deal, but who does that? When you're banging out and batching out parts, you're ramming it against the fence, you're pushing against the stop block and you're cutting. So when you're trying to get a bunch of pieces exactly the same size and you keep doing this every time, each one is going to be a little bit off. With this, that's not a problem. Now, the only downside to this stop block is, unlike this one, you can't move it out of the way. However, by unscrewing these, you can store it out of the way in the back, which is great. Generally, I just unscrew it and pull it off and put it up here, whatever. All right, let's do a little show and tell with these two items. First on the miter saw, second on the table saw. That's it. Those are the only two places that I currently use these. Yeah, yeah, so let's do that. As I mentioned before, this is just a prototype. I believe on the newer version, there's only one tightening knob and one tightening screw on this end, and it rides on a rail with only one T-track but all the functionality still applies. Now when you flip this thing over, you'll see right here these tabs. Maybe we can zoom in on those. These are 1 8 of an inch tabs that are designed to fit perfectly in your zero clearance insert with a 1 8 
full curve blade. If you've made a 45 degree cut on this and this outside left edge is not perfectly in line with your blade, then this is not going to work properly. And conversely, if you like to cut on the right side of your blade, if the right side is not perfectly in line with the outside teeth of your blade, it will not function properly. So what you do with these tabs is you put them in your zero clearance insert, pull them over to the left and slide everything back against your fence. So the adjustable stop is against the fence as well as the fixed stop over here on the left. Now for my purposes with this shorter rail, since my fence doesn't start until way over here at about 16 inches, this jig doesn't work exactly how I would like it for shorter pieces. But I can show you how I use it with short pieces in this fence as well as if I get a longer rail that will come in contact with my existing fence out here. So with the tabs of the sliding rail, pushed up against the rail and also tight against my miter, I can now move this rail to whatever length I want. So let's say I want to make an 11 and 1 8 inch cut. I lock it in on there. And then as I come to the end stop here, right here is perfectly 11 and 1 8 of an inch. Now, since my fence starts over here, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage on the shorter cuts for right now. What I would typically do in this situation is I would come with a stop lock and drop it right here and then clamp it to my fence. So once I get the longer rail and I'm working with longer stock, this then comes out here, comes in contact with my fence, and waiting in the wings is the Jonathan Katz Moses stop lock to create that production stop that I need. Now one of the other great features about the JCAT stop lock is it can come all the way out, almost to an inch and a half, I believe, away from the fence and still be completely accurate and have zero deflection. And yet another great feature of this stop lock is if you unscrew one and you turn the stop lock to a 45, use a combination square head to make sure you're at 45. And now you're set up for a production run of cutting moldings or casings. You cut one at 45, you can put it up here against the stop lock and make sure that all of your lengths are exactly the same. All right, let's head back yonder over here now to the table saw and I'll show you how these two items work perfectly over there as well. Okay, just as it was with the miter saw, when you're using a crosscut sled on your table saw, this kerf needs to be perfectly in line with the edge of your saw blade. The functionality of the kerf cut bro is the same. I'm gonna take these tabs, I'm gonna put them in the kerf, I'm gonna take the sliding block and the end stop, put them flush against my fence, move this over so it's flush again, the edge of my zero clearance insert, and then I can just move this back and forth depending on what length I want. So let's go seven and a half inches, lock that down. Now typically I would have a fence on my crosscut sled with a T-track in it. This is a newer sled because I just got this table saw so I haven't had a chance to make the other ones yet. However, the JCATS Moses stop lock still applies here. I can put it in place and actually, because this fence is taller, let's move this down. So with my Kerf Cut Pro tight, I can slide this over, and what I would do is I would just use a, a clamp here. Clamp that down, and we're good to go. It's locked in there, nice and tight. Make all my cuts, now if I have to make a move, I can slide it over. Okay, next up is this. The Spider Tools Magnet, no, it is not magnetic. I got magnets on the brain from the Magport the Spider Tools Tape Measure Tool Holder. Unlock. This attaches to your belt. There's a two-piece system, so you have this, and then the male portion of it that has a self-adhesive sticker on the back that attaches to your tape measure, and there's also a screw in the middle to really attach it to your tape measure. What I found is if I use a little bit bigger screw than what comes with your tape that attaches the clip, it actually expands this just enough so that the friction fit is a little bit tighter. Because I found when I was using the locking mechanism to lock it in place so it couldn't fall out, I would always just kind of forget and I would fumble with that a little bit. So I found that works for me right there. But it is ingenious to have a lock because I find like when I'm going up the stairs or walking around this thing could pop out. Now I found out about this from Chris Parker, CP Builds on Instagram and YouTube. He's got a great YouTube channel, does a lot of tool reviews. So this is a really cool invention. They have a bunch of other things for attaching drill bits to your drill and other tools. So go check out their whole line of products. I'll put a link down below. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put this back on my belt. And show you the next one. All right, this next one I'm a little hesitant to show you only because according to the manufacturer's website, they're currently sold 
out due to COVID-19 and getting materials and the holiday rush, they're just a little bit behind in production. However, the letter on their website says they will be back up in stock very soon, so I encourage you to bookmark the link I have below and just keep checking back. So what is this I'm talking about? This, the Zack Rabbit countersink set with belt loop. This was designed by Brian Griffin and his son, Zach, who's a tiny house builder. I've had this in my workflow for almost two years and I absolutely love it. Okay, first off, here's what comes with the kit. You have a 7 64ths, a 1 8 and a 9 64ths drill bit with a countersink. Hidden under there, you can see is an Allen wrench for swapping out the spare drill bits, which are located here on the back. And there's also a plug cutter. It also comes with dual sided drill bits and this magnetic collar. So with the belt clip on the back, I can just attach this to my belt. Most people wear a tool belt, I do not. So right into my regular belt. And with my drill bit chucked up in my drill, depending on which size you want to use, drill your hole, drive your screw, back in the holster. You want to use the next size up? Okay. Next size, no problem. And I suppose we should give you some kind of an action shot here. All right, there you have it. Six really cool tools I use in my shop that you may never have heard of. Now, I definitely have my favorite here, so let me know in the comments below which one yours is. We had the Wobi camera jig, we had the Magport dust collection fittings, the Kerf Cut Pro, the Spider Tool Holster, the Zack Rabbit drill bit and countersink set, and the J-Cats Moses zero deflection stop block. And also let me know if you'd be interested in another video like this. I probably have another five or six things around you may not have heard of that I use on a regular basis that I think you would really like. Jerry, any parting words? <coughs> All right, there you have it. Until next time, I got nothing. Cue the outro music. <laughs>